Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to part two. We weren't going to have a part two. Uh, however, I, due to the awkward camera angle, when I pressed resume, I actually didn't press it properly, did I? So I sat here talking to myself for half an hour and recorded nothing. Anyway, I know you've all been there once or twice, so I guess you've just got to have a laugh. Anyhow, back to this. I'm sharing my rather large folder um, in the hope that it might inspire you or assist you in some shape or form because I'm hearing a lot of people speaking of shifts in value systems and their own spiritual journey, which, as I started to say before, I prefer to call self-mastery right now. That's just me rather than spiritual only because I feel the, the way that, and this is a very general statement, please understand, but the way the spiritual, if you want to call it that, um, world slash community slash philosophy is going, some of it still works for me, but a lot of it doesn't. I just feel that quite a bit of the dialogue that I have been privy to, let's just say, majority of it in my local arena does not fit my journey anymore. That doesn't mean they're wrong and I'm right. It just means that we are going in different directions. And hey, that's fine. At the end of the day, even if you are on a spiritual journey within a spiritual community, you really still should be here for self. And I think that's the thing. I love the idea of a community. However, there seems to be quite a commercial um, branch of spirituality that now requires you to spend a lot of money um, in order to learn where really, is there any guarantee that your teacher's teaching is going to suit you or be right for you? I think the teacher's teaching is perfect for the teacher. Now, let me be clear. I love courses. I love learning and I love classrooms. It's a wonderful way to meet like-minded people. And it's a rare occasion for me to walk out of a classroom going, that was crap. It's rare. It has happened, but it's rare. Um, however, I'm just saying, I think since the big shift that really began in 2011, had a kick in 2012 and has continued to evolve since. Um, I think that slowly but surely the new consciousness is pointing towards us, assisting each other, yes, holding hands, yes, opening our hearts to each other, yes, but finding your own self-mastery, finding your own spirituality. But just for my personal journey forward, the irony is I don't need less I need more so I had nothing to say and now it all wants to come out and that's why I made this so you can see here this is supposed to be rustic I want it to be rustic this is me writing and sticky taping or gluing things because it's a work in progress as am I I wrote down here this is all for me to, like this is a reminder to me every day when I open this see the sun see the light Feel the warmth. You know, the sun rules Leo, which rules the heart. And down here, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. That's a reminder for me. Not only that, as I turn over, I just got this message to myself. Open your eyes to life. I mean, we all walk around with our eyes open during the day, but are we seeing what's ahead? Are we observing what's around us? So I downloaded this picture, which I found really inspirational. And this is what I mean. All of this stuff is just coming out now. I sat there in silence and now it's coming up. Oh, this is nothing profound. It's actually very simple. And I think there's a message in that. And so this is what I wrote. I just typed it without thinking. Open your eyes to life. Look within yourself. Then look around you. For they are one and the same. Open your eyes Drop into your heart. Observe each moment as a miracle. Life is glorious. Yet, if you do not allow yourself to see it, there's no point. 
So I know that's me talking to me. All this rushing around and all these technical things that you can, you know, tick off your list of things to do. Fabulous. Keeping up. But it's kind of all outside of yourself. So that's that. That for me, every day, I'm not allowed to jump to, you know, August 15 or wherever it is on the day. This is, this is my promise to me that every morning I read this, I look at this, I read this, and then I come to this. I felt inspired by this spark because I felt that's what was going on within myself. And it, it reminded me of a beautiful prayer that Caroline Mace read out on her tour last year. And I tweaked it ever so slightly just to suit myself. This is not religious, by the way. And that's why I love it. Because God is above you and within you. Because you are God consciousness. That is my philosophy. So this prayer reads, Hover over me, God. Hover over me. Surround me with the grace of heaven. Take me deep down into my soul. Sorry, it's actually take me down deep into my soul. Take me down deep into myself. Remind me to stay present and let nothing disturb me. With you, all things are possible in my life and in my soul. Hover over me, God. Let your grace fill me, fill my heart, and let this day be a healing one. And so be it. And I love that. So, again, this is just play. I had some crayons that I had to buy for a course to colour in, you know, auras and chakras and bodies and whatever. And so this just popped into my mind. You have the power to turn it around is a really powerful mantra to me. And it was my tagline on the very first um, brochure I ever made for my astrology practice. And I found myself again. You know, this little, it's simple. I know it's, it's childlike, but I just, you know, looked at myself going, wow, I just keep doing that. And then this is again a reminder for me every morning, be a conscious creator. As I start my day, that's what I remind myself. And then I found myself just doodling. And there it is again, like this crack, this opening. And it's kind of leading up to something and we'll get to that in the pages to follow. So. This is my little work folder. Why did I buy this kind of folder? Well, it's actually one of these where you can just pull the pages out and click them back in. Love it. Rather than a you know ring binder, I'm not all that kind of, you know, the big ring ones. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. Um, however, you can't buy paper, not here anyway, with this particular um, finish. So it meant that I had to purchase a trusty single hole punch and I just trace the paper um, like I use this as as a tracer trace trace I don't know how you say it but I traced it from this <laughs> and um, it sounds like a painstaking job but honestly sit down and watch a movie and just do a few pages at a time that's the beauty I'm not going to cut out you know 500 pages just do whatever I need per month and it's not a lot so as an example this here, I put here books to read. Now, I just started this on the 11th of July. Therefore, there's a lot I need to transfer from my diary onto here. And just to share for the sake of sharing, this is on the top of my list. These are books that are on my bookshelf. I know. Tut, tut. In other words, there's no need to buy anything. Read what's already there. This is my sister-in-law's book and she loaned it to me so long ago I don't even want to admit how long and it's supposed to be very very interesting. I know a few people that have um, read this book. It's Recollections of Death a Medical Investigation by Michael B. Sabom MD and so if you are interested in near-death experiences, uh, the documentation of, you may be interested in this book. This is a hardcover. Um, my sister-in-law bought it secondhand from a secondhand bookstore. You can see it's a little old. Um, who cares? I just want to read up. And I think this, this doctor is still around, by the way. And um, anyway, I don't need to kind of go too far into that. So that's what I'm going to read. And... I'd say top of the list is this, the um, 
shadow work, tarot shadow work that I bought a secondhand copy of. And uh, this is by Christine Jett, J-E-T-T-E. And I can't wait to dig into this little baby. And so that's going to be high on the list. This is a book that I bought for $4 secondhand. And um, it's called The Tarot by Alfred Douglas. I think it has a Kabbalistic um, element to this book. And um, the, the back um, captured my attention. It says the puzzle of the original meaning and purpose of the tarot has never been fully understood. The enigma of its complex sorry, complex and beautiful designs never satisfactorily resolved. An expert in occult symbolism, Alfred Douglas has long been fascinated by the ancient mystery and power of the tarot. In this authoritative study, he explores the traditions, myths and religions associated with the cards. He invest sorry, he investigates their historical, mystical and parapsych sorry and psychological importance and shows how to use the cards for divination. So there is that one there. I'm sorry, I just butchered that description. And last but not least, I found this on my shelf and I thought, oh, wow, that's right. Bought that, never read it. So this is called the Toltec Path of Transformation, Embracing the Four Elements of Change by Heather Ash Amara. So they'll be going on the top of my list and there will be many to follow, I have to say. Now, something else will go here, not sure what yet, but I put, um, I, I taped um, an envelope, notes to self. So any little inspirational things, things to do, things to attend to that relate to, to this folder, um, rather than lose them or have little pieces of paper pile up everywhere, which I don't like, I'm going to pop them in there. I might just put another envelope there for something else as well. And then here comes, you know, the, the, the working part of this um, diary. Oh boy, it's probably not going to be much better if I bring it closer to camera. I've printed out um, July. This comes from freeprintablecalendar.com. It's a decent size. All I've done here, sorry, the way I've got this tripod, it's actually quite difficult for me to um, give you a close-up without either going out of focus or out of shot, but I'll try my best. But what I've done here, I'm just marking the full moon and the new moon and some astrological highlights that are important to me for um, the month of July. So um, say like Mercury moves into Leo on the 14th and Venus moved into Leo on the 12th. So that's, you know, these guys are almost hand in hand. And, um, you know, this could be a tricky day. The 17th, the sun is square. Uranus, so tricky for some, light bulb moments for others. So on and so forth. Then what I do every month, I always write in my diary highlights for Scorpio and Libra. I'm a Scorpio with a Libra rising and it's always recommended if you do watch sun sign astrology reports, um, there are some great channels on YouTube and I will um, put some links below for you. I think the way that sun sign astrology is um, intuited and formulated now is so much better. The standard is so high compared to what it was. Some years ago when I did my diplomas, most sun sign astrology was pretty crappy because it was just so general. It's like, pff, what's the point, you know? get your chart done or don't worry about it kind of thing. Or at least the people that were out there advertising it, mm, they were okay. I tell you who is fantastic and you print out a free report every month and that is Susan Miller. I think she's just as, uh, astrology. Is she just astrology.com? Anyway, Google Susan Miller, S-U-S-A-N, and her reports are fantastic. Anyway, I just write down the highlights myself. My point is you don't have to be an astrologer. You can find this information. Um, some of it is my information, but some of it is from YouTube channels that I really respect. It's highly recommended that you listen to your sun sign, moon sign, and ascendant. Personally, I find the sun and ascendant works best for me. It's so accurate. It amazes me. You have to remember, though, it's a general statement, but that's what I'm saying for a general statement, a general report for Scorpios. Wowza. Really quite interesting. So I put that in there not to live every moment of my life by, but to have an overview of the energies 
that are coming through for that month and that to me is important. On the other side here, I've just written here which planets are retrograde because that's also important. It puts um, or adds a lot of flavor to the energies that are going on. So at the moment, we've got Saturn, Neptune and Pluto all retrograde. And because they are uh, um, further away from the sun, they're not personal planets, they don't shift much monthly. Um, you can see here Neptune hovers at 11 degrees of Pisces over the month of July but he moves from 11 degrees 57 minutes down to 11 degrees 27 minutes so for most of you that'll be totally irrelevant but um, Pluto did move a degree down from 16 to 15 and so on and so forth when you have planets like Mer Mercury retrograde well it does make quite a difference within one month um, he's normally retro for about three weeks at a time after that, I've put my daily draw for July. So you can see I've only, I actually did build this, build, I built this, um, I actually put this folder together on the 11th. So I've started this from the 11th. However, I'll probably transfer my entries from earlier in the month um, in pages to follow. But um, the way I'm doing this is if I draw a card, I will either write something personal that it, you know say that I get out of the card intuitively or I might say for Osho Zen I still would like to be more familiar with the philosophy of the guidebook because I really respect it and so I wrote um, like a small blurb taken out of the book or based on what the book says um, I really love it then I drew from the same deck, um, Nothingness, which is so apt. I thought, my God, that's where I've been in no thingness. So say no more, I wrote there. And then today I drew um, Magic, as in The Magician by Margaret Peterson or Marguerite Peterson. And I just wrote a small snippet from her book, Through the Mask It Sounds, I Am. Soul glides into body, ever new self-creation. Again, that really resonated with me. I thought that is where I'm at. I'm just really beginning to see this because I'm paying more attention to my daily draw, not just, you know, pulling it out and popping it in my little stand in the kitchen and leaving it there for a day. It's just amazing how just rearranging, you know, how you do your stuff can make such a big difference and um, hence the reason for this vid. Daily draw will continue there. On here, I've got the new moon. So obviously we had the new moon, 12 degrees of cancer on 4th of July at 9 p.m. my local time. I wrote about this particular cancer new moon because there are always other elements every new moon. Depends on what the other planets are doing. So for me, this was just, you know, my little world. And I noticed how I um, drew the death card in the fourth house of home, moon and cancer in a number of spreads, three in fact, in, in a close period of time, which was very interesting. It just kept coming up that there are big changes around the area of emotions, family, home and can be linked to the past where I've been. And see, with this new moon, Pluto is opposite the new moon and Pluto is my ruler and it even makes it more complex and fascinating at the same time. So that's what it is for me. Then down here, I drew another card. Note this same thing. It's like energy coming out of the seed. Um, hope you can see that okay. I'm losing light. I do apologize. Uh, this is the One of Fire from the Elemental Tarot, Harmonious Willpower and Enterprise. Again, I just felt like, my goodness me, the seed is coming through everywhere in spreads for me at the moment. Yet the death card, see, goodbye to the way that I've been feeling, which is very, very apt. And I wrote also, but my home business, what's that going to morph into? Because I know I'm changing, therefore my business will also change in structure. So who knows how that's going to um, formulate because I am in a year of change numerologically as well. On the back, on the other side, I'm just putting new moon wishes. Normally I write 10 wishes every new moon and it pertains to the um, sign that it's in. So Cancerian wishes um, for that particular new moon. So I have to transfer them. Then this page is ready for the full moon. Again, I will do the same thing, write about the full moon and what it means to me. 
um, or how it affected me um, in Capricorn, which is opposite Cancer, obviously. So that's what I mean. I've got endings to Cancer and we've got, you know, the full moon, which can really solidify the wishes that you put up to the new moon and bring them out into the public sector because that is Capricorn. Interesting stuff. Now, this is my gratitude list page. Mm, sorry, here we go again. My gratitude list page. So I've only written four. I have to um, write them up. I'm just writing one per day in here. But normally in my quiet times, I offer the universe three things that I'm grateful for at the end of every day. It really isn't hard. So um, it'll just be, yeah, the highlights, unless I'm really compelled to write more. Now, finally, I get to the point. See this here? I made an observations page and I put the spark of new energy is all around this month. I have drawn a number of aces without thinking, and I really mean without thinking. I mean, even the sun, the rays are coming out from the sun. I just did this, you know, again, I saw that. Oh, got to keep that and put it to this prayer. I drew it there. I drew a big one there. And I drew this card here, which has the same principle, the arrows are energy. And I thought that was interesting, so I put it in my observations page. This here is wrapping paper. And I bought a gift for a friend, and the lady at the shop wrapped it in this paper. So that's why I decided to keep one. I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was standing in the shop, I thought, oh my gosh, there's that symbol again. It's just, to me, that's what observations is about. Look, listen, look up, look down, get your magnifying glass, keep an eye on things. This could be an observation of the external world, the internal, and of course, one is the other, isn't it? So um, I put, the observation can be even about my behavior. Something I observed about myself for this month is the motivation for doing my morning stretches and exercises are intermittent, which is very, very unusual because I love my morning stretches. Without it, I just don't feel right. And um, some days I was just in my head as I was explaining to you before. So this is all about, you know, observing me and what's going on or you know something that comes to mind that I feel obliged or inspired to write down next is the shadow work page so obviously that'll be a big one I'm going to delve into that book and you know just just do some general spreads as well and see what comes up for shadow work and here again this is quotes and inspiration now I'll be honest you could say these all do crossover observations inspiration and habit tracker. I think that there are times when I might be thinking, hmm, which page will this go on? You know what? I don't care because I really, that's not the right term. I don't mind because I very intentionally broke it down. I don't want one big pile of notes, you know, in one big book as I was doing before. And I'm finding it so interesting that you know, I'm, I'm compelled to go through my research notes and divide them up even more. It, it's, it's my way of achieving greater simplicity. So for me, again, sometimes, you know, like this is an example I wrote in Quotes and Inspiration. My strong drive to review all of my research papers and course materials continue. I'm sorting, culling, replacing, rearranging, all fueled by a shift in vibration that was on the cards for some time, I allow. So I could put this in observation, couldn't I? But I felt so inspired to do this, to make this folder. I just felt that it belonged on this page. So this may not work for you, but I'm feeling really good about it. And the, again, I love this because I might add something, you know, a month or two down the track and, 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 and come back to this page and reformulate it. And it's just easy to add pages in between the two, which is why I got this particular folder. Um, also here, as far as quotes go, I'm not collecting quotes for the sake of collecting quotes. Um, I'm a big fan of quotes, by the way, but 
It's if a quote comes along that really touches my heart at that time, or it might be, again, something that someone says in passing that I feel in my body, and that's exactly what happened here. Someone the other day said, the sky is the limit as part of a conversation, and I felt this click in my solar plexus, and I wrote, why? And to me, it all relates. The sky is the limit. Look up as my, you know, big, beautiful eye in the beginning of this folder reminds me to do look up look out see open your eyes and really see um again that spark of inspiration and inspiration and to me creativity comes from the solar plexus it's leo leo rules creativity and risks everything creative is a risk this is a risk i'm presenting this to you but the risk is you either like it or think what i'm doing is a load of rubbish you know that's the risk i take but as long as I share from the heart, which is also Leo, um, you know, that's, that's the best I can do. And there should be no problem with it if, if you like it or if you don't. It's okay because I'm just sharing from the heart with the intent that you will gain something beneficial out of it in some shape or form. So that's why I put this photo picture, sorry, this image is actually in a brochure that I have. It's Bali and I've been planning a trip there for a while. And um, so to me, it all just fit in. The quote, keep your face towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Again, I came across that this month and it meant something to me. Um, I'm not interested in just going on to, you know, quotes.com and printing out a whole bunch of them for no particular reason. So that's why I've put, because quotes inspire me, um, and inspiration comes in all shapes, forms and sizes. So that's what I mean. It's just, it's, it's open slather, you might say. Um, don't know what's going to go there yet. This is spells and magic. Um, I am no expert, but I'm very interested in spells and magic. I have um, dabbled, you might say. Um, I'm not a practicing witch. I wish I could say I was, but I have so much more to learn. But I did buy some spell books some years ago now. And you know my favorite I cannot find? I know it's on my bookshelf, but it's just a bit disheartening when you can't find it. But um, it's actually tarot spells. And um, I actually did this um, get that impossible job tarot spell and I got the job. A hundred people applied. So that was my last music industry job. So there's really something to be said. But there's another tarot spells I have, which is this one here. I've had this for years and years. And look, there's so many things I need to read. These will all go on my, um, you know, to read. This was gifted to me by a friend, the ultimate encyclopedia. This is nice and simple for people like me. So don't laugh at me. I know you're, you're all way, way ahead, but um, you've got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> And actually, oh, this is a great little book too, but when I say little, it's quite thick. Um, Encyclopedia of 1000 Spells. And I also started this and need to finish it. I like this, the Unspell book, Energy Essential for Mastering Magic. So that's what this is going to be about. Um, but not just spells that I may try, experiment with, do whatever i'm not sure what the proper term is sorry but also just anything any sort of magical serendipity that that it happens in my life i think i will also document that in this area so again i don't want to be too rigid about it over here you caught a glimpse before this is called my habit tracker so whether i do things that are in my best interests or not they're going to go on this page so at the end of the month i can review whether i was good or naughty like there could be a crossover here failing to do my morning stretches you know for two days in a row didn't do them in sydney when i was there all by myself in that beautiful apartment no i just made a cup of coffee and gazed out to the beautiful view hmm so yeah that kind of things before I end, because I know this is getting a bit too long, this is just an experiment. Like these pages here, I just printed them out to see how it turned out. This is just on 80 GSM paper. To my surprise, you know this paper actually, I thought this is going to fall out. It's not strong enough. It's great. It's actually really good. Um, mind you, I purchased this. Uh, where is it? 
anyone can afford it. I think it was about $5. This is a Visual Art Diary 120 GSM and it rocks. The paper is beautiful and it can still go through your printer with ease. And I will only use this paper from now on, but I'm not going to throw this in the garbage just for no particular reason. Um, I'm very big on recycling, especially paper. So this is what I've um, printed for this month. This is Tarot Insights. So, sorry, I'm struggling to get this in shot. Um, this will be for any spreads I do for this month, so I just have to put the holes in them. And I've just done my, oh, oh my God, observations and shadow work. I like that font better. Um, that's for next month. I'll put that in for August. <clears throat> so that's about it, really. And then in, I just keep a few of the plastic sheets in the back just to store anything. I just found this image that I really like, this amazing tarot astrology wheel. I'm not even sure what you call it, but it's the associations. Um, tarot astrology associations blended. Beautiful. And um, there's August there's September and this is just a few spreads I've got for some reason printed two pages out I actually have a folder full of spreads that I've created or um, found online and I thought I might just cut them out and put them on my spreads page if I decide to do them and um, utilize them that way if not it goes into the recycle bin I guess and very lastly this here this title page this is a piece of cardboard right which is this this actually came out of um, you know when you buy labels or photo paper you know if you want to actually print out an image on photo quality paper there's a piece of cardboard in the back and again I'm so big on you know utilizing everything and recycling this is a great um, cover page or title page or divider so if you have anything like that, you might like to utilize them. So that is it as it stands. I know it's going to change and morph and grow. And that's why yet again, I'm sounding like a broken record, but I love the fact that you can simply take the pages and easily rearrange them or add anywhere in between as time goes on, rather than just having it in a diary and having to think way in advance as to how you'd like to structure your index um, I'm pleased with it and it might look cumbersome to some of you but look look how I mean I just easily feel that page that's just the new moon alone shadow work and um, spreads I mean that's just going to be so so easy to um, to fill up I think um, things like this it's 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 certainly not going to be a waste and I can even if I like maybe take a you know picture of the cards or whatever I've actually got a page that I printed of the whole mythic tarot deck and shrunk it down to an A4 size so the cards are you know so big so I might just use that as a generic um, deck of images that I can put if I decide to add any cards um, in the the spread section of this folder if you know what it's like it's just nice to see an image so I may use that if I had it in front of me I'd show you but anyway I think this is um, getting just a little bit too long and too self-indulgent but I, I do share this from the heart and I, I just hope that in some way shape or form um, if you've been in the void like I was or if you've been feeling a little bit lost you know just something out of this um, sparked um, a seed of inspiration within you and whether it be um, inspiring you to start a new diary a different diary or just to, to do something different or add a page in your diary um, my job will be completed so on that happy note I'll close it's the only thing with this folder once it's open it doesn't want to close see there's a message in itself so this big baby here will help it just settled down. So take care, everybody, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. And thanks again for your amazing videos. Bye.